Welcome back to the lab, my guinea pigs. Uh, so, this is starting the Macintosh series. Uh, so, I am not a Ma Macintosh uh, person at all. I never owned one, and uh, actually like a, like a classic one. And uh, so that's going to be interesting because I will discover a little bit of those uh, early platforms uh, with you. And, um, and so, yeah, first I had to acquire one. Classic Macintosh. So we, we will explore the Macintosh Plus, uh, which is the Macintosh that just came uh, after the first Macintosh. And um, in terms of like platform, that's a 68000, like a Motorola, exactly like the Amiga 500. It's very close actually when you look at the, at the motherboard and so on, you'll see that there. So we will uh, first, uh, yeah. Go back in the past and see how I restored this Macintosh, and then um, what I want to do for for the deep dives uh, after this uh, first uh, video is to uh, look at the back. We have a SCSI connector. Uh, so imagine back in the day that was very early for uh, for SCSI SCSI, right? And um, and it was so early that this. Um, uh, this SCSI connector was not completely standard. The, the machine was built before the standard was actually completely uh, finished. So um, I don't know what's the difference. We will, uh, we will see that together. Right? But first, let's go and uh, make this thing uh, as beautiful as it is right now. A big bundle of joy arrived from eBay. It was well. Uh, well packaged, uh, really a lot of, <laughs> of bubbles everywhere. But here is the main unit. Uh, you see that uh, it was disgusting. Honestly, it was like soaked in kind of uh, old dust uh, that got uh, smashed with like a like some splash of uh, coffee or something. That was that was really terrible. So it's, it's a Macintosh plus, plus like uh, I was saying. Uh, from the model number is M001A. Uh, the M001 is the original Macintosh. Like I was saying, the specificity is that uh, it has a SCSI port here, and uh, along with the other ones like uh, classic ones like. Uh, uh, serial port and, uh, and uh, modem port, and like a network port, and, uh, and so on. Oh god, there is a battery in there probably. Oh my god, I was really scared because usually those won't explode and, and leak all over the place. But I guess uh, we were lucky there. Uh, nothing was uh, touched and the thing was pretty well sealed. It's a strange format, it's a 4.5 volt, uh, so you'll need to get one. Um, with the package I got a mouse that was absolutely crusty, right, you see it. Uh, it seems to mechanically at least work, uh, but uh, yeah, we will need to uh, clean that up. Also, there was a keyboard in a bad state, unfortunately. Um, like, so, like the other ones, like very dirty and a, a key was missing here. Uh, the, it looks like the, the peg that is on top of the switch was broken. So, what did I do? I bought another one, just to be sure for you guys that I have something uh, presentable. This one looks like way better. A little bit of um, a yellowing on the space bar, right, and on the case itself, but otherwise it looked uh, really nice. Um, and I checked, like, yes, that's the same uh, switch, right? Uh, those those uh, keyboards were, uh, came with the various switches. Uh, in the package, uh, also I had like a SCSI um, cable, right? Uh, that you see on the left. Oh, the key is there. That's cool. Uh, so at least I will be able to repair the, the keyboard. Uh, we have the keyboard connector here, a few, few floppy disks, uh, various things, a uh, thing about sound, uh, some Microsoft Word product, and the basic, apparently the basic um, uh, set of floppy disks you have uh, with a Macintosh. 
so at least hopefully we can boot it up. And also in the package, which was nice, uh, we had this uh, cutting edge uh, enclosure uh, that, uh, that is holding uh, a SCSI one hard drive. Uh, it's pretty well done. Oh, you see at the back that there are, there are the SCSI uh, termination, right? We will deep dive into SCSI and how it works and why do you need those little resistors uh, on the device. And uh, yeah, sorry for the focus, but uh, so you have the SCSI ID that you can set up. It's pretty cool. I think the SCSI number six is the default one to boot and a pass through a DB, uh, DB connector. Right? Also, uh, when you are dealing with those old uh, Macintosh, you need a specific tool, which is a kind of a long Torx um, uh, screw uh, driver. So I try it like quickly uh, with my uh, my fixed screwdriver and it looks like it fits so perfect. Uh, so like I was saying, this thing is, was really dirty. So I clean it up like quickly and then uh, let's get started and uh, with like the specific tool. Uh, let's open, crack open this case. Oh, wait, yeah, those, those screws are so uh, at the bottom that, yeah, I needed to uh, uh, use a magnetizer to uh, be able to uh, extract the screws. The screws. Oh, yeah, it seems like it works. So this is for those top ones, you need all this really long uh, screwdriver. I'll uh, link all the links in the comments below. So that was something that was annoying me, right? This uh, there is this kind of a uh, kind of a velcro at the top. Uh, so I used my um, uh, my sticker remover, right, to uh, to remove it. It was ticking a lot so yeah forcing it, it was, I finally made it made it happen uh, be careful there is an hidden screw uh, tried to uh, open it and was wondering why it was not opening up but uh, so behind the battery um, uh, cover there is there is a screw and then it just slides out from the back so at first sight like this thing is very well done right like it's very modular, you have uh, everything that is clearly uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know, spaced out. And uh, it's a very nice machine and very maintainable. So let's unplug the motherboard. Um, I know from the, from the eBay ad that uh, the floppy drive was not working, right? So. But first, I wanted to uh, clean up the machine. So I, you can slide out the motherboard uh, straight from the top once you removed all the um, all the cables. Uh, it is self-locking, so it's a little bit hard to remove. But uh, uh, but it's when it's once it's in place, it can it doesn't move at all. Uh, so looking at that, uh, yeah, it, it will need a, a cleanup. It's very uh, dirty. Uh, so I decided like to remove all the RAM uh, sockets, uh, so RAM, uh, SIM RAMs, right? And uh, just go in and uh, use some soapy water uh, to clean up the PCBs. So you, you need to be aware that that's fine to, to um, clean up a PCB like that. And uh, water and soap are, are, not, um, are not doing anything, but you need to be careful to not uh, switch on uh, the machine while there is like anything uh, uh, humid in there. So what you need to do is basically uh, uh, dry up your, your motherboard after cleaning it up. Then I worked on removing the floppy drive, right? Like I was telling you, uh, I knew it was bad, so uh, you had to, to uh, unscrew it from the bottom, right? You have a kind of a, kind of a cage that is uh, soldered on from the back.
then simply you can remove the four screws uh, around the, uh, the floppy. Uh, that is like um, a custom one, but the format is pretty standard. Yeah, this, this thing was really dirty, so I had to clean it up too. Let's focus on this uh, floppy drive. Um, so, uh, Adrian from uh, Adrian's Digital Basement has an awesome video about how to restore those uh, floppy drives from those old Macs, right? Uh, those Sony branded ones. Uh, so you see there is uh, the, the head there and uh, like a, a screw to actually uh, move it from track to track. Uh, it's really dirty. If you look carefully, you see that here there is the track zero detector. So that's something else you need to uh, to take care about. Like you need to um, to uh, to be sure that it's cleaned up. But overall, the thing was so disgusting that uh, I just I just like globally uh, uh, globally washed it with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. So all the uh, bottom sides and so on, right? Uh, so at least I can start to work on it. So I use the chamois tips, I love them, right? They are, they are like uh, very uh, uh, very strong like Q-tips, right? Uh, with like uh, chamois, chamois tips, right? And I, uh, with isopropyl alcohol, I, I basically rub the, uh, the heads, right? Uh, so usually that's the number one cause of uh, uh, for your floppy drive not working, like especially the, those old, right? So be careful, don't, don't force it too much, but you can rub them. And then I, I just went in and, uh, and cleaned up inside the, the slot. Uh, then for all the moving parts, right, I used the other side of this uh, chamois tip, right, and put uh, uh, some uh, li lithium grease and went in, like first, like the track uh, screws uh, that is hooked up to the, the step motor, right. Uh, and then all the moving parts all around, like everything that you can see move, right? You just uh, put a little bit of that. Uh, so that's the first approximation of a, of a cleanup and a restoration. Uh, then I put back the RAM on the on the motherboard when it was uh, dried up. But uh, first, I had to clean up all the contacts with the contact cleaner, both on the motherboard and uh, on the on the seams. So you'll see that uh, you'll see uh, that a little bit of uh, oxidation will be removed out of this. It's not always necessary, but I, I prefer to do that because uh, I really don't want to uh, to use those uh, uh, plastic uh, sockets too much. Right? They are very brittle, so uh, I want you to do that only once. So be careful when you put them back. Really, uh, 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 be gentle with them. If they break, it's a pain to. So it's time for a first try, right? Uh, let's put a, a floppy drive in there and uh, try to boot it up. Uh, sorry for the for the camera, right? I put that in 50 hertz, but at least the basic works. Like it kind of uh, 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 shows up with an, uh, a boot image and waiting for a floppy drive. So the floppy drive like uh, clicked very well, so it, I was uh, I was pretty confident, confident that yeah it boots right. Uh, so I was really happy. Uh, that's uh, on the first try after acquiring it. Uh, so we are good to go, and I think now we can focus on making the cosmetics better. Now, now that we know that the basics are are working. So I boot up the the two of the Macintosh. You saw that uh, Apple was already like very um, cautious about all the details, right? So before going further, uh, I'm always scared about those uh, CRTs, right? So you should be too, right? Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, please be careful about this. There is a that there, there is like a uh, basically this those CRTs are, are act like a, a big capacitor, right? And uh, 
So with a tool, I check if there is still a um, high voltage uh, stored in there. Then uh, I go in and remove all the screws that are uh, screwed to the front, fa front face. And again, uh, because, uh, because I'm a little bit paranoid, I, I check again with my uh, uh, CRT tool if there is any, uh, any voltage remaining before touching it, right? And uh, so you have like two uh, kind of um, like hooks, right? That you can remove uh, uh, from the CRT to this, uh, to this uh, sucker, sucker uh, uh, connector. And there is also a return, a ground return that you need to uh, remove, but don't forget to put it back, right? You can damage your CRT if you don't do this uh, afterwards. And then you can remove the, what you call the, the analog board. Then you can go on and remove the CRT itself. Uh, be careful uh, manipulating this, right? It's uh, pretty fragile, right? Uh, and it would explode or implode exactly, right? If you uh, hit the back or, or the neck on the bottom, right? So usually I put like a, uh, my little trick, like I put um, uh, a tape uh, underneath, right? It's usually stabilized, is well the, uh, the screen without, uh, without uh, scratching it. So then I cleaned up the face and, uh, and we need to uh, remove this little uh, logo that is uh, pretty cute. And I saw that there is a little hole on the on the back. So with a, a piano cord, I tried to remove it. It was it was hard, right? So um, uh, trying it straight was uh, pretty rough. So started to heat up the uh, the logo so it, it, uh, it can get uh, get out of this. Be careful to not burn your uh, your front face, right? Uh, and then store store that carefully. So this thing is pretty yellow, so I put that in the, in the retro bright um, uh, bath. And here it is back from the bath, right? Uh, you, I put back the little uh, logo. So also being careful that I don't uh, spill any of this uh, glue on the front face, right? So uh, it was not obvious, it's pretty small. Uh, so be patient and uh, really wipe out well the any residue that you see, right? So this face, uh, I was uh, stunned on how well it responded to RetroBright. Uh, if you're interested, I can make a, a, an episode about my re RetroBrighting uh, technique, but it was it was like it came back uh, like almost new, right? Uh, remember there was the, like this kind of like a square thing around the Macintosh push thing and it disappeared. Here you can see actually the, the step between um, the original color and uh, how it became. So while I was putting the, the main case in retro writing, I started to, uh, to clean up this like disgusting uh, mouse. So went all around, I needed to use a brush because the texture is pretty uh, rough. Uh, so you really need to go uh, through all the crooks and crannies and, and so on, right? Um, uh, everything was disgusting, the bowl was disgusting, uh, and I had to uh, clean it up like for, for a while. So th then you need to uh, clean up like uh, inside um, uh, there, uh, your the button. So be careful about the button, right? Like how it is uh, put on. I didn't see how it was really, and you'll see later, it's, it is important. So here, uh, again, you remove uh, everything. Don't lose the, the screws. Oh, this is nice, right? It's it is uh, it is a real uh, switch, right? Like like in on those gaming devices, right? Uh, then like cl clean up everything, clean up the um, uh, all the little uh, uh, all those little rollers, right? Like uh, you probably know that, like it's a classic thing in uh, in vintage computers. You need to clean up those uh, uh, mouse rollers. Like I went through uh, with. This, these tweezers and so on it can be time consuming and uh, i saw that there was some damage here like again like it looks like the it was dumped with uh, coffee or something this this machine had to remove coffee stains everywhere even inside the mouse 
Uh, King Depth also the uh, the chord, right? That's uh, a classic thing. So I like to to uh, finish with this. Uh, same thing for the keyboard. Uh, the the uh, the space bar was uh, was uh, not hooked up correctly. Uh, hopefully, it was not damaged, right? And uh, I could uh, put it back uh, later. You'll see. So same thing. Uh, you uh, unscrew everything, clean up inside. Then I cleaned up the, both parts of the of the case for the for the keyboard and I uh, clean, cleaned that up and put that also at uh, at the retrobyte um, uh, at the retrobyte session for the keyboard itself. I looked at this uh, space bar. Uh, and basically decided, okay, I need to remove that. Uh, also retrobite it, um, and uh, yeah, remove all the all the dust and things uh, that were that were in there. So if you've seen my other restoration videos, it's pretty close to what I'm always doing, right? Like uh, removing the keys one by one, uh, carefully seeing that if anything is missing. And, uh, and basically cleaning uh, everything up uh, with soapy water. I use a, a standard uh, key puller. Uh, be careful with those uh, those pegs, right, uh, can break. Uh, so be careful, be patient when you're doing this. Uh, those things are brittle and, uh, and old. So I take the opportunity that uh, all the keys are removed to clean up really well um, under the keys. So first removing the, the dust itself. And then I go in with, uh, I use some uh, uh, glass cleaning uh, uh, liquid, right? It works very well for, for this. So after the, some cleaning in some soapy water, I, I enjoy like putting them back together. So you, now that I have two keyboards, now I have a, a reference. So I have uh, the keyboards on the top to, to guide myself and uh, add them like straight to the right spots for every, every single keys. So those keys don't need to be uh, retro bright. Uh, they were like almost like uh, almost good as new when I, uh, I cleaned them up. I used those uh, discs on the right hand side because it was uh, it was not stable. All right, uh, although the parts came, came back from retro writing, it was amazing. Like, they really uh, they, they came back like almost looking as new. Right? Look at this mouse, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, close to the original color. Uh, I was super happy about how this uh, uh, plastic was uh, uh, coming back well. So, okay, it's back, all clean. Uh, try to boot it up. And the machine kept on rejecting, re rejecting my, uh, uh, my floppies, floppy disk, right? So I tried to... Uh, clean them, right? I was like, what the hell is going on, right? It was working well before, right? And I just put the machine back together and it didn't work uh, anymore. And I really insisted that this thing did not, really did not want to work, right? So cleaning up again, trying again, didn't work. I was like, what's going on? I read somewhere that uh, those uh, those machines need a battery. So I hooked up my uh, power supply at 4.5 volts and tried again. I know, didn't work. It didn't want to uh, to get this uh, uh, this this floppy disk. And I re realized something that actually the mouse was the issue. Uh, once I unplugged the mouse, right, it stopped it to stop to do this uh, kind of uh, uh, like a medical device noise, right. And I realized that the uh, the spring in there was pressing on 
the little uh, switch, right? So be careful when you put, put back uh, together your mouse, right? Uh, because the, that's a thing with Macintoshes, right? If the, 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 the mouse is depressed when it boots up, it's a signal to actually eject the, the disk, right? So it was continu continuously trying to eject the disk because, because of that, right? So, yeah. Uh, once I fixed that, uh, it started to actually work uh, very well, right? Here, here you see it booting uh, in its glory, uh, all restored. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this, right? Like we, uh, we'll ex we will explore this uh, machine, right? And like I was saying, like I'm uh, looking forward to, um, to explore this uh, first instance of a, of a SCSI interface, right? And uh, see what we can do about it, right? I ordered some um, some parts, and uh, we will wait for them to uh, arrive, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, uh, and welcome to uh, Machine Touch. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, to be one when the follow-ups uh, for this video will, will uh, come up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, if you have any comments right like I was saying I'm a, a Macintosh noob so uh, feel free to uh, uh, to share tips with me uh, so we can learn a little bit together on, on those machines thanks for watching <laughs>